Chapter 147 Thalamus Introduction Thalamus is a large ovoid mass of gray matter, situated bilaterally in diencephalon. Both thalami form 80% of diencephalon. Thalami on both sides are connected in their rostral portions by means of an intermediate mass. Caudal portions are more widely separated by corpora quadrigemina. Thalamic nuclei Thalamic nuclei are classified by two methods, anatomical classification. Physiological classification Anatomical classification Thalamus on each side is divided into five main nuclear groups by Y-shaped internal medullary lamina. Midline nuclei Intralaminar nuclei Medial mass of nuclei Lateral mass of nuclei Posterior group of nuclei Midline nuclei Midline nuclei are a group of small nuclei, situated on the medial surface of thalamus near the midline, Fig 147.1. Intralaminar nuclei Intralaminar nuclei are smaller nuclei present in the medullary medial mass of nuclei. Medial mass of nuclei are situated medial to septum and it comprises two nuclei, anterior nucleus. Dorsomedial nucleus. Lateral mass of nuclei This group of nuclei are situated lateral to septum. Lateral mass of nuclei are again divided into two subgroups, dorsal group of lateral mass with two nuclei, dorsolateral nucleus. Posterolateral nucleus. Ventral group of lateral mass with three nuclei, ventral anterior nucleus. Ventral lateral nucleus. Ventral posterior nucleus. It consists of two parts, ventral posterolateral nucleus. Ventral posteromedial nucleus. Posterior group of nuclei. Posterior group of nuclei are the continuation of lateral mass of nuclei. It has two subgroups, pulvinar. Metathalamus which consists of two structures, medial geniculate body. Lateral geniculate body. Thalamic reticular nucleus. Thalamus also includes thalamic reticular nucleus, which is a thin layer of neurons covering the lateral aspect of thalamus. It is separated from thalamus by external medullary lamina. It receives information from reticular formation, cerebral cortex, and other thalamic and sense inhibitory signals to other thalamic nuclei. Physiological classification on the basis of functions and their projections, thalamic nuclei are classified into five groups. This type of classification is also called Bondock classification. Five groups of thalamic nuclei are, Specific sensory relay nuclei. Specific motor nuclei. Association or less specific nuclei. Nonspecific nuclei. Limbic system nuclei. Nuclei and their functions of each group are given in Table 147.1. Connections of thalamic nuclei. Connections of different groups of nuclei are given in Table 147.2 and Figure 147.2. Thalamic radiations. Thalamic radiation is the collection of nerve fibers connecting thalamus and cerebral cortex. It contains both thalamocortical and corticothalamic fibers. All these fibers between thalamus and cerebral cortex pass through internal capsule. Fibers of thalamic radiation are divided into four groups, which are called thalamic peduncles or thalamic stalks. Thalamic peduncles are anterior, frontal, thalamic peduncle or radiation superior centroparietal thalamic peduncle or radiation posterior occipital thalamic peduncle or radiation inferior temporal thalamic peduncle or radiation anterior frontal thalamic peduncle or radiation anterior thalamic peduncle connects the frontal lobe of cerebral cortex with medial and lateral thalamic nuclei it contains mostly motor nerve fibers. Superior, centroparietal, thalamic peduncle or radiation. Fibers of this peduncle connect post-central gyrus, some aesthetic area, of parietal lobe and adjacent area in frontal cortex with lateral mass of thalamic nuclei. It contains mainly the sensory fibers. Posterior, occipital, thalamic peduncle or radiation. 
Posterior thalamic peduncle connects occipital lobe of cerebral cortex with pulvinar and lateral geniculate body. It contains the nerve fibers concerned with vision. Inferior, temporal, thalamic peduncle or radiation. Fibers of this peduncle connect temporal lobe and insula with pulvinar and medial geniculate body. This peduncle contains the nerve fibers concerned with hearing. Functions of thalamus. Thalamus is primarily concerned with somatic functions and it plays little role in the visceral functions. Following are the various functions of thalamus, one relay center. Thalamus forms the relay center for the sensations. Impulses of almost all the sensations reach the thalamic nuclei, particularly in the ventral posterolateral nucleus. After being processed in the thalamus, the impulses are carried to cerebral cortex through thalamocortical fibers. Two center for processing of sensory information. Thalamus forms the major center for processing the sensory information. All the peripheral sensory impulses reaching thalamus are integrated and modified before being sent to specific areas of cerebral cortex. This function of thalamus is usually called the processing of sensory information. Functional gateway for cerebral cortex. Almost all the sensations are processed in thalamus before reaching cerebral cortex. Very little information of somatosensory function is sent directly to cerebral cortex without being processed by the thalamic nuclei. Because of this function, thalamus is usually called functional gateway for cerebral cortex. 3. Center for determining quality of sensations. Thalamus is also the center for determining the quality of sensations, i.e. to determine the effective nature of sensations. Usually the sensations have two qualities, discriminative nature. Effective nature. Discriminative nature. Discriminative nature is the ability to recognize the type, location, and other details of the sensations and it is the function of cerebral cortex. Effective nature. Effective nature is the capacity to determine whether a sensation is pleasant or unpleasant and agreeable or disagreeable. Determining the effective nature of sensations is the function of thalamus. 4. Center for sexual sensations. Thalamus forms the center for perception of sexual sensations. 5. Role in arousal and alertness reactions. Because of its connections with nuclei of reticular formation, thalamus plays an important role in arousal and alertness reactions. 6. Center for reflex activity. Since the sensory fibers relay here, Thalamus forms the center for many reflex activities. 7. Center for integration of motor activity. Through the connections with cerebellum and basal ganglia, thalamus serves as a center for integration of motor functions. Applied physiology. Thalamic lesion. Thalamic lesion occurs mainly because of blockage, due to thrombosis, in thalamogeniculate branch of posterior cerebral artery. Mostly, Posteroventral nuclei of thalamus are affected because the thalamogeniculate branch of posterior cerebral artery supplies this part of thalamus. Lesion of thalamus leads to a condition called thalamic syndrome. Thalamic syndrome. Thalamic syndrome is the neurological disease caused by infarction of posteroventral part of thalamus. It is a rare disease and it has many names. Synonyms of thalamic syndrome are listed in box 147.1. Box 147.1, Synonyms of thalamic syndrome. In thalamic syndrome, whole body becomes hypersensitive to pain. Effects of thalamic lesion occur in the contralateral, opposite, side. Following are the symptoms of thalamic syndrome, loss of sensations. Loss of all sensations, anesthesia, occurs as the sensory relay system in thalamus is affected. Asteriognosis Asteriognosis is the loss of ability to recognize a known object by touch with closed eyes. It is due to the loss of tactile and kinesthetic sensations in thalamic syndrome. Ataxia Ataxia refers to incoordination of voluntary movements. It occurs due to loss of kinesthetic sensation. This type of ataxia due to loss of sensation is called sensory ataxia. It is very common in thalamic syndrome. Thalamic phantom limb. The patient is unable to locate the position of a limb with closed eyes. 
the patient may search for the limb in air or may have the illusion that the limb is lost. This is called thalamic phantom limb. Anosognosia. Anosognosia is the lack of awareness or denial of existence of a neurological defect or general illness or any disability. Spontaneous pain and thalamic overreaction. Spontaneous pain occurs often. Pain stimulus is felt more acutely than in normal conditions, hyperalgesia. Pain may be so intense, that it even resists the action of powerful sedatives like morphine. Threshold for pain is very much reduced. Even the light touch may be unpleasant. Sometimes, the patient feels pain even in the absence of pain stimulus. It becomes worst in conditions such as emotional disturbance and exposure to cold or heat. Pain is due to overactivity of medial mass of nuclei of thalamus, which escape the lesion. Abnormal reaction to various stimuli is called thalamic overreaction. Involuntary movements. Thalamic syndrome is always associated with some involuntary motor movements. Athetosis. Athetosis means slow writhing and twisting movements. Chorea. Chorea means quick, jerky, involuntary movements. Intention tremor. Tremor is defined as rapid alternate rhythmic and involuntary movement of flexion and extension in the joints of fingers and wrist or elbow. Intention tremor is the tremor that develops while attempting to do any voluntary act. Intention tremor is the common feature of thalamic syndrome. Thalamic hand or athetoid hand. Athetoid hand is the abnormal attitude of hand in thalamic lesion. It is characterized by moderate flexion at wrist and hyperextension of all fingers.